Welcome to day 20 of Natural Beauty Summit's Detox Your Beauty Regimen series. I'm Salome Salehi, founder and president at Sugar Sugar Wax, a clean beauty company. And today you get to meet the very first licensed naturopathic female doctor in the state of California, Dr. Trevor Cates, also known as the Spa Doctor created a two-week program for healthy and glowing skin. This two-week skin detox is detailed in her book called Clean Skin From Within, 20 days into the summit. And I think that we can all agree that what we put into our bodies has an enormous impact on how we look on the outside. In our chat today, Dr. Cates shares how she stumbled upon some of the key principles in this program and how food affects our skin. She also shares some vital foods that you want to keep in your kitchen for their skin perfecting superpowers. She even shares a recipe from the program to help you glow. As someone who is deeply committed to helping others uncover their glow through sugaring, I was really intrigued by the superpowers of food in the megawatt glow game. Stay tuned for my discussion with Dr. Cates. Hi everyone, I'm here with Dr. Cates, author of best-selling book, Clean Skin From Within, as well as founder of the Spa Doctor line, which we will be talking about through the series. Um, I wanna get right into it, because in this series, we've been talking a lot about how our skin, since it is one of the detox mechanisms of the body, does tend to reveal um, things that are happening with us internally. Now, what I really like, I love that you call our skin the magic mirror. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Of course, yeah. Well, you know, skin is our largest organ and it's right on the surface of our bodies and it gives us great clues about our overall health. I think a lot of times people forget this and they think, oh, I've got, I'm breaking out, I'm, I, I've got wrinkles, I've got blemishes, whatever. I, I've got to cover it up, I've got to suppress it, I've got to do something to hide that. But what I want to encourage people to do is that you're your body is giving you signs that something is out of balance. If, if these things are happening, um, you, you know, usually there's some, some sort of root cause that needs to be addressed. And when you do that, the really great thing about that is we'll, we'll talk more about the root causes. When you address the root causes behind common skin issues, you're usually addressing the, the, the root issue behind so many health problems. So you're going to help your skin, but your overall health. Yeah, and you know, it's been a developing theme. And, um, and I love that, like, you know, you just get, you, you're able to also classify the skin in like five different categories. Um, let's talk about that. In your book, Clean Skin Within, you talk about these five types of skin. Can you share them with us? Yeah. Well, the reason why I created these is that I, I realized that the typical um, types of skin are dry, oily, mature, that sensitive. Those those didn't really help with addressing it from a root cause perspective. So I wanted to redefine skin types around the root causes behind them. So what I found is that there are six root causes behind skin issues. And again, they, they tie into a lot of other health issues like nutritional deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, microbiome disturbance, um, oxidative damage. So these are some of the things that uh, affect the skin. And so what I did is I created five skin types. They're Amber, Olivia, Sage, Emmett, and Heath. And people can actually, I do create an online skin quiz. It's theskinquiz.com where people can just go and find out for themselves which skin type they are. But what I did is I, I 
I thought about different patients I have and patterns that there were. Not everybody has all six root causes, but there are certainly patterns that most people fall under. So that's why I created these. So each one of these skin types has a, a combination of these root causes. And so when you know your skin type, with these, um, with, you know, one of these skin types, you can really hone in on what's going on behind the skin issue and focus um, addressing that with a natural approach. And I, I take a, I take everybody through a two week program in my book. And when they know their skin type, they can kind of customize and, and personalize it for them. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me because different skin types are more susceptible for to different things, like even sun exposure and the pigment, the natural pigmentation of your skin and how that reacts to the sun um, is a great example of that. But um, are you able to just give us an example like, like my skin type or your skin type, like which category would it fall under and what are some of the typical things that we would expect to see with that skin type? Right, right. So like the Olivia skin type is they tend to be have a little bit oilier skin, a little bit more acne prone um, skin. And so with that, there's usually some sort of um, concerns about the, the gut microbiome, which impacts the skin microbiome. So that's one of the root causes we really want to address with people with with Olivia skin types. Um, and also blood sugar is an important root cause as well. So one of the things that we know is that with, with people that tend to break out a lot or easily is that there's oftentimes some blood sugar imbalance issues. So um, you want to be Olivia skin types want to be particularly careful about sugar consumption or foods that cause the blood sugar to spike because they're going to be a little bit more susceptible to that. Um, and, and then, you know, again, the gut microbiome is so key for so many skin issues, including the Olivia skin types. So I'm, I'm sure you've talked, you, you know, your audience is probably aware about the gut microbiome, but not as many people talk about the skin microbiome, which is so important. And so what's going on internally with our gut, with the the microorganisms that live there, the balance of those, and help protect our digestive system, you know, with digestion, absorption, and a lot of it, but it's also related to a lot of symptoms with the body. We have this, the research shows there's this direct connection between the the gut and the skin. And so when the gut microbiome is out of balance, the skin microbiome will be out of balance. So if we address that, it'll help from the inside out. And then also what we put on the skin can impact the skin microbiome. So it's both. We need to do, as a naturopathic physician for so many years, I did it just from the inside out, which I, you know, which is fantastic. And I was getting most of my patients were getting better, but then there was like still a little bit of, of, you know, problems on the surface of the skin. And so what I realized is when you add the topical component, it's that last little connection that the, the skin microbiome needs for uh, resolution. Absolutely. And um, I want to talk a little bit about how you got your patients to that place where they were improving. Um, you have a two-week plan that you outline in your book, uh, Clean Skin from Within. Can you tell us a little bit about this, what happens in this two weeks? Like, yeah. I think our audience is now, you know, we're all home with COVID and we're thinking about our health and well-being and um, our gut plays a huge role in that, our skin plays a role in that, and overall health. So it's a real, it's really timely to do something like your two week program. So give us the highlights. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason why I came up with this, so I've, I've been practicing as a naturopathic physician for about 20 years now. And um, about six years ago, I started working at the Waldorf Astoria here in Park City. And I was doing a two week weight loss program there. And when my, my patients would get through the two week weight loss program, they'd say, Dr. Case, I've lost all this weight. I feel great. But what really surprises me is my skin. I didn't know my skin could look this good. 
And to me, it made sense because I've, you know, I had my own skin issues as a child, which is what led me to become a naturopathic physician. Um, and I also knew as a naturopathic physician that our, our skin is being an outer reflection of inner health. But I realized that so many people didn't know that, that people were just didn't make that connection. So they were so surprised. So then I decided to start changing the two week program, really focusing on the skin because of course people can lose weight. They can get all these other benefits from the two week program. But I realized there's such an opportunity for people because they've got an immediate, like they could see right on the surface of their skin within two weeks, they usually see a difference. And so that's why I, I, I you know, that's where the clean skin from within two week program came from originally. But um, so there are four different parts of the clean skin from within two weeks. Okay, program. before you get into it, I just yeah. want to like plug a little bit here. What I really appreciate about this book and this program is that it's so simple and it really like one of the themes that has been developing in the series is common sense. Mm -hmm. And your book really underscores that common sense and the ingredients and the recipes they're not like these outlandish, like you have to go to like Brazil to get ingredients. They're like things that everyone can find like right here. So I just wanted to mention that. So if you're looking for something really simple, easy to follow with really like, you don't have to think about recipes. I find that the thinking about recipes and thinking about how you're going to eat different can become really overwhelming because you're already making all this change. Now you have to think about doing and creating something different three times a week. So I love that the recipes are there. Right. And I love what you do with them. How you go like, <laughs> put it on and then drink it. <laughs> yeah, there is one recipe in the book that um, <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you, have, you have a face mask and then you add one ingredient, maybe a couple of ingredients, depending on how you make it, um, and, you, and you drink it as a smoothie. So face mask smoothie combo, and it, yeah. And that really speaks to that like, your gut, the microbiome in your gut and you, the microbiome on your skin are, have such, they're so interconnected. Right. And there's so much nourishment um, that we can do internally that we can also apply externally. I mean, a lot of the ingredients that are in my skincare products, when I start uh, talking about them, a lot of times people say, oh, I take that internally. Like, yeah. you know, I take CoQ10. I, I, you know, I do like you know, white and green teas and ashwagandha and, you know, some of these, these herbs that, um, you know, we take internally, they also have beneficial benefits um, used topically. So that's why I included the DIY skincare recipes in the book too, because I thought that would be fun for people. Uh, I know my, my girls and I, we love, we love making them, especially right now when we're trying to find creative things to do at home. We've been whipping some of those up and enjoying them. Um, so, so just getting back to yeah. that, you were about to talk about the four pillars of the program. Yeah, yeah. And just so people know, if people are interested in doing it, I do have a free Facebook group that's a clean skin from within um, a Facebook group. So people can just join that if they're interested in getting some tips and support in doing the two week program, we offer that as a, a free resource for people. Um, and so there are four pillars and there's, there's a clean plate, clean slate, clean body and clean mind. And so the clean slate is about what we're putting on our skin. So we want to get rid of the toxic ingredients and instead use natural alternatives. And I always, what I've learned as a naturopathic physician is you, is like, you know, you can't just tell people what to take out. You have to give them alternatives to put in there because that's the beautiful thing about the healing powers of nature is that you get rid of the toxic ingredients, but then you get the benefits of natural ingredients. And so that's what's really beautiful about, you know, toss the synthetic fragrance and instead use organic essential oils as you know fragrance for personal care products it's such a nice alternative for so many different reasons it's you don't have the toxic effects and then you have these mood mood bit boosting benefits of a lot of the um essential oils that you can put into personal care products like we do with the spot doctor products yeah, let me just underscore that because i think a lot of people don't realize that when something smells awesome, that most of the time the source is not good, not good. Like I remember as a teen, I used to love going into Bath and Body Works 
and like it's so overwhelming it smelled amazing but that's all synthetic and it really has a huge impact on your health and i'm not going to get into it but i'm a big believer of the essential oils as alternatives also the fragrance lasts longer mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the thing about one of the big things about synthetic fragrance for people to understand why it's not good is it's, um, it's listed on the label as one ingredient, but it's actually not. It's a whole bunch of different ingredients and they, there are uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals in these. These are hormone disrupting chemicals that are in fragrance. There are things like diethyl phthalate that's used in fragrance to help the smell last longer, but it is a known endocrine disrupting chemical. So this class of chemicals are things we definitely want to avoid because they are known to bind to hormone receptors and just create all kinds of issues with hormone function. So endocrine disrupting chemicals have been associated with infertility, uh, thyroid disease, and certain types of cancer like breast cancer, prostate cancer, and a number of other, really if you think about anything that the hormones are related to, these can impact that function. So we want to do everything we can to reduce our total exposure to these chemicals because we're exposed to them in our air, water, food, and personal care products. We're just surrounded by them more and more each day. So there are certain places where we have control to reduce our overall exposure. And one of those places is our personal care products. So even if the only thing that you take away from this is to get rid of those synthetic fragrances, that's a great start. So synthetic fragrances. Another example are some of the chemical sunscreen ingredients like oxybenzone. And so that is one also that's a big concern because of the endocrine disrupting effects that it's been associated with. So zinc oxide is, an, is a great alternative to that. So, so in my book, I lay all of that out. So avoid these, use these instead. Clean slate clean slate. And then the clean plate we talked a little bit about, and that's the foods that you need to nourish your body and the foods to avoid. So within the two-week program, there are going to be 10 things that I encourage people to take out to avoid during the two weeks. And it's not necessarily that they'll have to always avoid them. Although some people at the end of the two weeks say, I don't want those things anymore yeah. in my body. But um, when you, at the end of the two weeks, you'll have an opportunity to bring those back in and, and I explain how to watch for any kind of reaction. And then you know for yourself how you feel when you eat these foods. You've taken them out You've eliminated them out of your body and the pro-inflammatory effects, the things like sugar or dairy, gluten, these can be big triggers for skin issues. So when you take them out, that sometimes that alone can be a big thing to help your skin get some relief. And also, like I said, you know, it's, it's tied into so many other root causes that you're helping your health overall. And then you can, you know, you know, for yourself, what your, what your, how your skin reacts to these foods. And then of course, like I said, I give alternatives, like don't eat this, but eat this instead. So, so you don't feel like you're deprived because again, I've seen patients for years and I've heard it all. I've heard, I can't, I can't give <laughs> up my cheese. I can't give up my milk and, and my coffee. I can't do that. And so I figured out how to help people during that time. It's not forever. It's just two no. weeks. And then at the end of the two weeks, people oftentimes they realize they don't crave sugar as much anymore. So they don't really need it. So it's not that you have to avoid it forever, but you just don't have the same kind of cravings that you used to. And also when you can see the difference on your skin, it's such a motivation yeah. to continue a healthy lifestyle. So I consider it a little bit of a reset or a reboot. Yeah. Some people say to me, but two weeks isn't enough time to, um, to completely change your skin. But the thing is, is that it certainly is, and my experience is certainly enough time for people to see enough of a difference. And for some people, their skin completely clears up. But if they've had something for a really long time, it might take longer, but it encourages them to keep going with it. So what's a good alternative to bread? <laughs> what are, what is that? Like, is there an alternative that you recommend? Because I find like, Bread is the hardest thing, especially when you have younger kids who love sandwiches. So what's a good alternative? 
So one of the tough things about bread on my program is that it's not just the, the, the flour that you're avoiding, but you're also avoiding eggs on my program. And I know that surprises a lot of people because everybody thinks um, eggs are such a great food and they generally are. They're been a very healthy food, but they, I do find that they are a common food allergen or food intolerance and they're a big trigger, especially for acne. So I do like people to cut that out. So then that makes it even harder to make bread when you can't do like multiple ingredients. So flat breads are sometimes a little bit easier and using gluten-free flours, um, there are plenty of them out there. I also in my program have people limiting grains overall. Yeah. So, so using flours like almond flour, coconut flour, you know, those types of flours are going to be a lot um, better alternative. Um, but my, as far as your kids, it, my daughter is strictly gluten-free and she has, she's now 13 and for the last five years, she has decided that baking, gluten-free baking is her thing because she does not want to miss out on soft pretzels and bread and, you know, cake and all these kinds of things that all of her friends are eating. So she's gotten really creative. So there certainly are plenty of alternatives to to um, gluten containing breads or even grain containing yeah. breads and baked items. So it, it's, we have more options now than we used to have. It's actually really great. Absolutely. Now with the grains, is it because of the lectins that you're recommending limiting them or is it just the calories? What is it about? A little bit of both. And now, so initially, because remember, I started as a weight loss program. So initially, it was to help people lose weight. But then what I was realizing is that it was also impacting their skin. So there are, you know, part of it's blood sugar, because, you know, grains can also, whatever they are, they can cause blood sugar spikes if you're, you're eating a lot of them. Right. So they can cause that increase in blood sugar, which then, so when it comes to things like acne, let me explain how that happens. So when you eat sugar or foods that cause the blood sugar to spike, it increases insulin. Insulin is naturally increases. When insulin goes up, that triggers a release of androgens and also excess sebum production in the skin. So the oils in our skin, and so excess um, sebum production and the androgens are one of the big things that trigger acne. So that's why when you, you know, when you eat, you have to be careful with the blood sugar balance. So that's one of the reasons why I feel like the, um, you know, when you're using more of like the almond flours, and that they don't cause those changes in the blood sugar as much. They also, and it all ties in together, um, they tend to be a little bit me more, um, the grains tend to be a little bit more pro-inflammatory too. Oh yeah. Too much. Right. Um, now I, I, I could go on like so many tangents, but I just realized that we still haven't covered the four pillars. <laughs> um, so clean right. plate, eat clean. Actually, before we move on, it would make sense right now. Is there, you've already touched on a bunch of them, but, um, are there any other, inflammatory foods to avoid when your skin is vulnerable? Yeah, I, don't, I think that the most important ones I talked about, the, the number one is sugar and, and other things that cause the blood sugar to spike. So, so being careful and mindful of, of that. Um, and certainly people can, pe some people are more susceptible to this because they have other existing, pre-existing conditions like uh, diabetes, prediabetes, PCOS. Uh, so looking at your fasting blood sugar can help you figure out if, if that's particularly a concern for you. Um, but as I mentioned, dairy, gluten, eggs, corn, these are some that tend to be big trigger foods. Now, not everybody, not, that's why it's a two-week program because you eliminate for two weeks, then you can reintroduce some of these back in. There's some things like sugar that are always going to be not good for you, but some people are going to find that they're okay with the eggs. Other people are going to find, oh my gosh, I've had so many people said to me, say to me, I took out gluten, I took out sugar, I took out dairy, and then when I took out eggs, that was the one that finally cleared up my acne. Wow. So the same thing with corn, um, and especially with people with eczema. So it just, you know, it depends on the skin, your, your skin issues as far as what are your big trigger foods. And then if people get through it and they're still not sure, 
they can go see a naturopathic doctor or a functional medicine doctor and get some food intolerance testing because you could test like a hundred different foods and a blood test that you can't you know eliminate and reintroduce back in. I just talk about the 10 most common ones. Okay, awesome. So we've got clean slate, clean play. Clean body and clean mind are the last two. So clean body has to do with not just reducing the toxins in your, in your skincare products and your food, but also what's in your home. What else is around in your environment? How can you reduce your total load to toxins in the environment? And how can you support your body's pathways of detoxification? Skin is one of our pathways of detoxification. When we sweat, you know, exfoliation and perspiration, all of that's really important, but also our liver, our kidneys, our lymphatic system, these are all important. So I talk about ways to help, you know, as a naturopathic physician, I talk about a lot of different techniques to help support detoxification. And then the clean mind section is about stress management and mindfulness practices. This is so key. All, all four of these are so important. And I know a lot of people focus in on the food and that is a big focus because eating is such a big part of our lives, but you've got to figure out ways to manage stress. Stress is a normal part of life and it's actually not all bad. I mean, it helps us be able to get out of the way of danger. But the problem is, is when we're constantly stressing, we never have a chance to stop. Then that's when things creep up on us. And it really ties into all of our hormones and hormones being a big root cause behind skin issues. And when you're stressed, it, it can wreak havoc on your hormones. And so um, in particular, the sage skin type, the um, emmet skin type, uh, those are ones that in particular really need to have stress management practices. But really, it's all of us. We all need to. And right now, I think with everything that's going on, it's there's a lot more stress. There's fear. There's worry. There's uncertainty. So now more than ever, we, we really have to have something, even if it's just getting outside, if you can, when you can, to get outside and take a little walk um, or to just, you know, take a soothing bath, maybe with a few drops of lavender essential oil, uh, listen to some soothing music, sit and just close your eyes and breathe, take some deep breaths. We all have time. There's no excuse for taking time. And for people that have families teaching your children these practices, if they see you doing it, they're going to understand that that's part of normal life. And that's so important for kids to see that when they're young and to grow up with it. It's so true. And it's so important. Like, I feel like for years I've been like, oh, I'm going to start meditation and just five minutes a day. And I, I, I would occasionally have like one meditation and then I forget about it for like three weeks. But since COVID and all the stress that you're referring to, like all the like uncertainty and the change, I've been meditating almost every single day for almost 20 minutes. And it does help that like we don't have places to run around to. So definitely that frees up a ton of time. Yeah. And um, about setting the example, it's so important. You can tell your kids whatever, but what they see you doing that has the lasting impact. It's not the words, it's the action. So some of the mornings I try to meditate before the kids get up. So I'll go downstairs and I'll be, I'll start my meditation. And some mornings, my four and a half year old mm -hmm. will get up with me or he'll hear me. So he'll come and then I'll be like, okay, mommy's going to do her meditation now and he'll do it with me. And it's been oh. like, so cute like such a cute bonding moment and also a teaching opportunity as well mm -hmm. now i want to get back to um clean body for a minute because okay. i know that there's like it could be overwhelming to think about all the things in our environment that we're you know exposed to that are toxic and that toxic load that you talked about what are some culprits that people are surprised by when you like draw attention to it and ask them to eliminate? Mm -hmm. um, no, I think we just get so 
used to the products that we use. We grow up with different cleaning products, with different personal care products, and we, we kind of don't even think about it anymore. We're just used to the smells. We're used to using them without looking at it. So I encourage people to, when they're you know cleaning, when you're using your personal care products, what you're bringing in your home, new stuff that you buy and bring home or order <laughs> from online and, and have shipped to you, start looking at, get curious and look at ingredients and start wondering where does this come from? What's in it? And if I can't pronounce this, I know I don't know this ingredient, look it up. And because you might be surprised and which most people are to learn how many toxic ingredients there are and, and the products we use in our home. Um, so it, and you know, you can really clean just about everything your in your home with vinegar and baking soda. So, um, and it's just, it's so simple, but of course, um, you know, we can make, make it overcomplicated and starting with using more eco-friendly products, of course, is a great start, but even those you still want to be a little bit mindful about, about what's in those. So I would say that's one of the big things. Another one is I'm always surprised at how many of my patients end up with um, mold in their homes and how toxic that can be. And what I'm finding is that with more people staying home, um, that they're actually learning that so that could be one of the things that's making them sick. So um, it, it, that's definitely something to get testing for. And even though mold might seem like an a natural thing like that's part of nature the way that we build our homes is not natural so that's why mold is becoming a problem in our homes and what even if you live in a dry climate i mean i have patients in utah where i am at park city it's high desert we've got i've got patients here with mold people in arizona it's not just coastal communities and things like that so that would be another one and i know i'm, I'm sort of opening a can of worms there but there's i have interviewed multiple people on my podcast on the spot doctor podcast that have talked specifically about how to how to get tested personally for your own health as well as tests for your home. Yeah, mold is definitely something that's come up a lot in this series. And just um I, I don't want to get a ton into it, but I would love for you to touch on, you know, there's mold that grows on your cheese, and then there's mold that's on your like walls or ceilings or wherever they it might be hiding what are like what are some of the differences why is it that we look at the cheese mold and we're like oh, okay that's gross but it's not gonna like hurt me unless i start eating it <laughs> <laughs> well you know we're surrounded by microorganisms and and fungi are just a microorganism they're just you know we have bacteria on us we have yeast that we have and that's it's that's not a bad thing we need all these microorganisms in our environment and on our bodies. Um, but the problem is when they're imbalances. So it's the same thing with, um, uh, with, um, with fungi or with mold growth. Is there, there can be some things, you know, like with, um, with cheese and different things um, that can be fine for us. Now, people who have a lot of mold toxicity issues can't eat those types of cheese. Like they will actually get sick because they've got so much exposure and they're they're dealing with what they've already been exposed to that they can't tolerate that but healthy people certainly can um so that's i mean that's one of the big things to think about but there are certain types of mold that are extremely toxic like black mold a lot of people have heard about black mold that that can be very dangerous when it starts to grow in your home um and be around so certainly some types are are more harmful than others Okay, thank you. I want to shift gears a little bit because we're almost running out of time and I want to talk about um, your spa doctor line as well as um, if you, as, as a segue into that, if you can talk a little bit about um, maybe some ingredients or uh, health and personal care products that people should be avoiding or just looking out for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the the one the big one that I mentioned is fragrance to to watch out for that one. Um, parabens are another concern. Um, mineral oil. There are so many better alternatives than petroleum byproducts and mineral oil um, that I think are such a healthier alternative. 
So, I mean, even something as simple as coconut oil or almond oil, or but then you get things more like a sea buckthorn fruit oil or argon oil, cranberry seed oil, raspberry seed oil. There's so many fabulous plant-based oils that are, they're high in antioxidants, they're high in omegas um, that nourish the skin. And there's such a better alternative and because um, there are some concerns with mineral oil and petroleum byproducts that there could be some contamination, they're used because they're cheap and, and they have a long shelf life, but they're not actually doing anything to support the health of our skin. So that's what I love about plant-based ingredients is that, again, they're not only are they clean, but they're so naturally rich in nutrients that our skin loves. And we need these antioxidants and these fatty acids to nourish our skin, especially as we're getting older and with the anti-inflammatory benefits, with the exposure to toxins and our environment, the air pollution, all of that can help. Um, and, you know, sun exposure, we need these ingredients just like we need um, these internally. We, we do great with them in skincare products too. And I see so many people looking at different fads and exciting new ingredients in skincare products. Um, but with a lot of times it's, it's about getting back to the basics and natural ingredients that support and nourish the skin and protect it too. So um, finally, I just wanna to touch a little bit about your spa doctor line how did you like what made you develop it like what it made you what made that part of your journey well i was doing the two week as i was doing the two week program and i was getting a lot of um great feedback from people and they were noticing these great benefits to their skin they would as part of the program i had told them to reduce toxins and so they were asking about natural skincare products but the problem is they come back and they would say these aren't working these aren't making my skin healthy. I'm, I am, um, and so I was given this information, you know, there were certain dermatologists I talked to, well, the natural skincare products don't work. And I started, so I started looking in the research because I thought, I suck and it's really hard to believe that because I know the healing powers of nature. And when I realized there were certain things missing from a lot of the natural skincare lines out there. And because I couldn't find any that met my criteria, I decided to make my own. And so not only are they free of toxic ingredients, but they also contain natural actives in very potent forms. So just like with supplements, you wanna make sure that your CoQ10 or your vitamin E is the best form possible. That's what I wanted with the natural ingredients in my products. I don't wanna, it's not just a marketing claim. It actually is formulated with very potent ingredients, the highest quality organic ingredients and oils, um, cold pressed and, you know, so that they still have all of their beautiful nutri nutritional benefits. Um, and then the other thing that I found in the research is about the pH of skincare products. And this is a really key part, and I'm sorry I'm just now touching on this because it's really important. Our skin actually needs mild acidity. A lot of people talk about you know, alkalizing diet and things like that, um, but our skin does best with a, a mildly acidic environment. So what we put on our skin needs to be in the 4.6 to 5 pH range, especially for the face, ideally. Anything that's over 5.5 is actually too high for the skin. And so it doesn't help provide the environment for the skin microbiome to flourish. It's so, so it's such a key and imp important part of that. So that's another thing about the Spa Doctor skincare line is you'll find that all of our skincare products, both for the face and the body are designed with some with mild acidity to help support healthy skin. And that's one of the reasons I think people do see a big difference with using the products in the smoothness, the texture, um, the tone, all of that, um, the evenness of skin tone, all of that. And it's amazing to see that we have one skincare system and that it helps so many different skin issues, but it works, that's because we're feeding it and we're nourishing it with the right foundation to help the skin be healthy. And I think that's a really important point that you just touched on is the skin is a living organ. It needs nourishment and needs to be taken care of. And I think a lot of the products that we've gotten used to growing up 
um, actually compromise the skin's function and they don't do, like they don't add, they just take away. Um, so I love seeing lines like yours come to fruition with this new philosophy of for skincare. And it is new, like to develop products that are therapeutic, healthy, and beneficial for the skin is actually a new concept. Whereas like, you know, lines that have been around forever, we've gotten used to using them. Like, I remember um, a while ago, Jennifer Lopez was talking about her mom's using Pond's cream. And I'm like, oh yeah, Pond's cream. But it's all petroleum. And that's not doing anything for your skin other than creating like a blocking, like congestive um, barrier. So thank you so much for touching on that as well. Um, any final words, tips, anything you want to share with the audience? Um, yeah, you know, I think um, another big part of, um, you know, skincare is that, you know, we talked about stress management and that remembering that self-care is actually stress management. So when you're doing your skincare routine, enjoy it. Um, let, let yourself be pampered. And I think especially for women, we really enjoy that and that's okay. And it takes some time and the morning and evening when we do uh, cleanse our face and we moisturize, that is a perfect time to set the tone for the day. Give yourself a little extra love and attention and just cherish it. And again, your kids see you doing this, they're going to start doing it too. They're going to allow time for, for themselves to have self-care and some self-love. Well, I can definitely attest to that because as a mom of two little ones who are like busy little bodies running around, just having that morning or evening routine, sometimes it's or, sometimes it's and, <laughs> but it's just a few minutes for me that I can focus on me and it's like quiet time and it really does feel like a de-stressor. It's a form of meditation, really. Right. So my kids are now 13, 18, and 21. And um, my 21-year-old son is out of the house, but my 13 and 18-year-old are still here. So I get to see what they still do. And they, they, have, um, they definitely have incorporated this. And it is more by watching me. They do take time for their self-care. They take time. They make self-honoring choices and set, set aside time for a healthy eating. And that's all because I set an example for them. So it does pay off. I know sometimes when you've got little ones, it feels like it's a battle and it's not worth it. And you might as well just give them the, the you know, the box mac and cheese and, and give up. But really, if you keep at it, they're, they're going, it's going to make healthier people. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and sharing your knowledge and expertise. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Um, any links that you're sharing for um, both your line and everything will be in the email, guys. So look out for that. And you, you mentioned um, you have a podcast as well. Yes, I do. It's the Spa Doctor podcast. Yes, so Spa well, Doctors. Yeah, is abbreviated DR. So you're looking. You can find that on iTunes or wherever you like to watch podcasts. It's on YouTube. Also, I do video and audio versions, so people can can check that out, or they can find it on my website too. Yeah. Sweet. So for more from Dr. Kate's, check out Spa DR on um, for your podcast. And I find we're listening to podcasts a lot more these days. So. I'll be sure to tune in as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.